This is the 9950X3D, the world's fastest gaming CPU. And this is the 9800X3D, the world's fastest gaming CPU. Both of these CPUs are very, very similar, but also very different at the same time. The 9800X3D came out in November of 2024, and this is basically when AMD perfected 3D vCache. They put the cache under the actual CCD, and this allowed lower temperatures and boosted clock speeds. I even regarded this as the world's fastest gaming CPU. If you're interested in my review, go check it out. But the 9950X3D released in March, and this actually allows for faster clock speeds, as well as eight more cores. These extra eight cores though do not have the 3D vCache on them. They are just normal Zen 5 cores. Think of it kind of like they glued a 9800X3D and a 9700X together, and you get the 9950X3D. What makes this interesting though, is that depending on the workload that you are using, Windows and AMD's chipset drivers will try to automatically park or disable a certain eight cores. If you're gaming, it's going to disable those frequency cores and just use the cache cores to allow you to get that higher gaming performance. Doing some workload where frequency matters more than cache, that's when it's gonna use the frequency. Need all 16 cores, let's say you're running Cinebench or you're using an all core load, like you're trying to generate optimized media or something in DaVinci using your CPU. That is going to actually use all 16 cores. It's just going to downclock them all to the cache, which allows it to all run at the same clock speed and give you that multi-core performance. So this whole core parking, disabling cores, does kind of make me a little hesitant when I bought this CPU. Will Windows and the chipset driver actually park cores properly or will it kind of interfere? I was so hesitant last time with the 7950X3D that I completely avoided it and just purchased the 7800X3D. But seeing how much AMD improved from the 7800X3D to the 9800X3D, like all of the weird issues that I had with the 7800X3D went away with the 9800X3D, that I thought this was the time to give AMD a shot and actually test the 9950X3D. I have been using this CPU daily since basically the same week it came out back in March. So I've had this thing for a while. One thing to mention also is that my motherboard is the Asus X870E Strix. What this motherboard has, it actually has two options that show up when I plugged in the 9950X3D. It has CCD Parker, which is actually in the main AI tweaker tab, which seems like this is what they're kind of trying to push, as well as Core Flex, which is an algorithm if you go a little bit deeper into the BIOS. These two different algorithms that, from the way I understand it, use the actual VRM and take the load and everything and try to figure out which CCD it thinks it should be parked. Basically, this is trying to remove the need for the chipset driver in Windows Game Bar, and basically Asus is kind of trying to take it into their own hands and try and give you a little bit better experience, probably. Testing was done on my 9950X3D using the latest Windows 24H2, latest chipset drivers, balanced power plan, for the chipset driver and all that to work, you must use Balance Power Plan. You can't use any other like ultimate performance power plan that those Windows tweakers talk about because if not, it actually will not properly park the cores. So we tested normal 9950X3D. You installed the chipset drivers. We tested CCD Parker as well as Core Flex, both those settings in the BIOS, as well as I actually did disable the frequency cores in BIOS to simulate a 9800X3D. Now, this is a little bit different than a normal 9800X3D that I have here. A normal 9800X3D, when you fully PBO tune it, will go to about 5.45 gigahertz, 5450 megahertz in games, just depending on temperatures. But the 9950X3D with just cache enabled will go to about 5556, getting you about 150 megahertz higher boost clocks. The reason why they do this is because when you're using all 16 cores, the frequency, which is going up to like 5.7 normally, will have to down clock to whatever the cache is. So they do bend these cache CCDs a little bit better and put them in this CPU just so that it doesn't have to down clock as much. Think about me kind of like benchmarking a 9800X3DS in Intel terms. All games were gonna be tested at 1080p to give me a CPU bound scenario. The rest of my specs are two by 16, 6000 CL30 at 2000 megahertz FCLK. This CPU isn't as good as my 9800X3D with DDR5 overclocking, sadly. 
and my 5090 running at 3200 megahertz and plus 3000 on the memory. Fastest PC on the planet. Starting off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p lowest preset. You can see that the 9800X 3D has the best average and lows out of them all. What did shock me though was that both ASUS settings had significantly lower FPS in both average and lows. I'm talking that 38% lower FPS using CCD Parker and 28% lower using CoreFlex. My guess is that it actually wasn't disabling the frequency CCD, it was disabling that cache. And when a game prefers cache, but it uses the frequency one, you're not gonna get that good FPS. Like, it's abysmal. Like, how am I using the same CPU and getting 38% lower FPS? It makes no sense. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p ultra rasterization shows the same thing. 9800X 3D wins with the 9950X 3D trailing by a few percent and both ASUS settings being significantly worse. This time Core Parker was about 16% slower and Core Flex was about 13% slower. Still, getting that much slower performance from the same CPU is just, it's not okay. Counter-Strike 2, a very CPU bound game, kind of does show a different story though. This game doesn't need to be in the cache as it actually already fit into the 64 megabytes of cache that was already on the CPU before and it shows no real performance boost. Core Parker is actually showing a win against them all in both averages and lows, and everything is close and within margin of error besides CoreFlex, which is 10% slower than a normal 9950X 3D, although it's like over 700 FPS, so it's gonna feel good anyways. It's Counter-Strike, you don't really need a crazy PC to run it. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 1080p shows that looking at the average FPS benchmark, all four are very close and within render-run -run variants, but when looking at CPU FPS, you can see that there's a slight loss for core flex and the rest of them are very, very close. But it's over 400 FPS in Call of Duty where most people are just playing on console at 60, maybe 120. Don't, like, you don't really need to complain. So what did we learn here? AMD actually did do their job with the 9950X 3D. You just use Windows Balance Power Plan, use the chipset driver, and it actually does the best overall. I would not suggest using either of those ASUS settings, and probably if you have a different motherboard manufacturer, let's say you have MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, just kind of avoid those. Feel free to test them for yourself, but the ASUS ones I would definitely not recommend. Maybe in a BIOS update they can fix them, but for now, no. I'm probably going to be selling the 9950X3D and replacing the 9800X3D back into my setup. I know I talked about how even with just the cache CCD, the 9950X 3D does boost higher, but you do get a little bit higher power draw, like significantly higher actually, higher temps as well. So a lot of times it actually will down clock depending on the title, as well as my 9900X 3D is already delitted and set up for direct die that I can do with my Noctua NHD 15. And for my workload, I actually do not need the 16 cores. I can stream off NVENC using my GPU. Um, DaVinci Resolve, which I use to edit, uses fully GPU. And if for some reason I want that higher frequency again, my X870E Strix does allow for ECOK overclocking, which allows me to use PBO and kind of a BCOK overclock to boost the performance of the CPU, getting me a little bit higher FPS as well. Should you buy the 9950X 3D over the 9800X 3D if you have the cash? Nah, nope. Unless you game all night and then you do productivity in the day and you need one that is equally good at both, I would not recommend this CPU. Just pick up the 9800X 3D. If you can get a good deal on one, probably think about picking up a 7800X 3D. But this plus the 5090 will be my final gaming PC for the little next little bit until something faster comes out. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you haven't already, hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you want FPS like you've seen in the video, make sure you go down to chambertech.net and get a PC optimization. Join the Discord as well. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what CPU you're running down below, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.